attention and bridle our heart. And that thought very simply is don't stop praying. We've been looking at the book of Nehemiah and Nehemiah served as a passage or really a text to show us the importance of what it means to live your life and to ex uh, exercise your calling through the power of prayer. We've learned so far in this book, just in the first few chapters, and we're going to focus on chapter four right now, but in the first few chapters, we've learned the importance of praying as you pause to respond to, to life's situations, to pray, to be reminded of how awesome our God is and how, how, how intricate he is in everything that we do. We've seen the power of prayer through ridicule and opposition and even how you pray to prepare for plots. And we're still in that chapter, chapter four. We're in that section where Nehemiah in the early part is dealing with all out attack, all out ridicule by Sanballat and, um, and the other individuals who were with him and going against God, Tobiah the Ammonite. I was trying to read and find it while I was doing this. And the others that were right there. And he shows us how, how you've got to learn how to give God whatever it is when you're dealing with the ridicule of someone else. But then you also have to learn. We've got to learn how to, how to use the power of who we are and, and remembering to pray to God to deal with pending plots. There will always be some challenge against your life and against those things that are against uh, that are that are affecting your calling. So in this text, look with me if you would at verse number 12 and we're going to read from verse 12 all the way down to verse number 18. We'll make some points, do get uh, go to God in prayer and then the thought will be yours. At verse 12 the text says, "Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us 10 times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us." Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest point of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by family and with their swords and spears and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to his own work. From that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work on one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Nehemiah's text is a powerful one and it blesses us to appreciate another aspect of why we should never stop praying. Remember this, don't stop praying because prayer is fuel for your purpose, but your purpose is given in order for you to produce. Let me say that one more time. Prayer is fuel for your purpose, but your purpose is given to you so that you will produce. God is expecting for us to be like Nehemiah. Nehemiah prayed and Nehemiah produced. He answered ridicule. He prepared for plots and he was producing even in difficult seasons. That's the thought I want you to grab a hold of, that God is still calling us to be, be productive, to produce even in a difficult season. He, Nehemiah teaches us that through an intentional 
and consistent prayer life, we can learn to see difficulty differently. If you and I can learn through prayer and through the avenue of going to God whenever we need to, you can learn how to change and see difficulty differently. Now watch, when you see difficulty differently, you face your seasons with security. Oh, that's a good word. When you learn how to see difficulty differently, you will face your seasons with security. And I don't know what season you're in. I have no idea what you're going through. For some of us, we're in a winter-like dearth. For others of us, we're in a fall-like season where things are dying and, and they're not what you expect them to be. For some of us, we're in spring. We're diligent and we're doing what we need to do. Some of us are in our summer-like moment where we're driving and doing everything we can to just keep everything moving like it ought to move. Whatever season you're in, whatever situation you're in, remember this. With however difficult it may be, when you learn how to see difficulty differently, God will bless you to face your season with security. There are five things that Nehemiah does in this section of scripture right here that will bless us to learn how to deal with whatever issue we're dealing with in a way where God can still prosper, you can still produce, you can look at your season, have security, and change the way it normally would play you to turn it on its head and keep on working, keep on producing, keep on grinding, no matter what. Number one, in this text, Nehemiah number one teaches us that in order for us to deal with what we're going through, we've got to learn how to get stationed. Get stationed. Say it back in your own spirit so I know you got it. Get stationed. Verse number 13, watch the text. Therefore, I stationed some of the people. Notice how, though, you're not just stationing. You're not just standing up. But notice the implication. I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords and spears and bows. Notice the point. The point when you and I are stationed at our best, when we're, when we're set up to make sure that we're present in the moment. In order for you to be present in the moment, you need to be present and aware of your exposed places. Be present and aware of your low points. You can't claim to get ready to bust into a difficult situation, but not pay attention to where you are vulnerable. Did you catch that? You've got to be aware of the fact that there are some things that might trip you up if you're not careful. There are some things that can play you if you're not careful. Get stationed. Get ready to cover your exposed places. Get ready to build up your low points. Get ready in order to face your season. You've got to, number one, get stationed. But then number two, number two, look at verse 14. Number two, watch this. After I looked things over, I stood up and I said to the nobles, watch, the officials and the rest of the people, watch this, here it is. Don't be afraid of them. Remember who is great. And awesome. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. I love the second point. The second point in order for us to learn how to see difficulty differently, not only do you need to be stationed, but number two, you need to learn how to speak life to yourself. I love Nehemiah stood up in the midst of everything and he said, hey, I'm not gonna, we're not going to put up with any fear or any intimidation. Speak life into yourself. Do not be afraid. What you see is false evidence appearing real. What you see are things that don't have the weight that their voice may carry. What you see, what you sense, what you might be feeling has nothing compared to your God. So don't you stop praying. In fact, speak life into your situation. Don't be afraid, but rather speak life into your situation. But then I love, because right on the heels of that, you have number three. You see difficulty differently by being stationed. You see it differently by speaking life. But then number three, out of that, you secure your heart. You see it? Be stationed, speak life, secure your heart. How are you securing your heart? You're securing your heart with what you know about God. See, I'm speaking life by saying, don't be afraid. But why am I not afraid? Because my heart is secure. Why is my heart secure? Back at verse number 14, the reason why my heart is secure is because I remember I remember the Lord who is great. 
I remember the Lord who is awesome. And when you remember, you can stop at Lord, truth be told. When you remember Jehovah, the self-existent one, the one who's got all power, who's holding everything together, who was and is and is to come, the one who was here in this season before you ever pulled up to it, the one who already has seen you come out of it, the one who knows every wound you've ever taken, every tear you've ever cried, every victory you've had, every battle that you've lost, that God, the God who brought you out of sickness, the God who stands you up day by day, the God who's still good to you, that God, when you know who he is, he secures you, remember the Lord, but don't just remember him, remember that he's great, and remember that he's awesome, secure your heart, but then let me give you number four. Nehemiah says, in order for you to see difficulty differently, get stationed, number one. Number two, speak life to yourself. Number three, secure your heart. But then number four, strengthen your resolve. Stay in verse 14 with me. Look at the C clause of the text. After he says, remember the Lord who is great and awesome. He then turns right back around and says, nah, now fight. For your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. You got to get in this thing. Strengthen your resolve. Can I bring you in on this? Watch this. Sometimes what you really need to bring in the power and the gumption and the fortitude of who you are is to jump in the fight for somebody else. It's amazing to me how that the best way many times to motivate yourself out of a low place, to motivate yourself out of a dark space, to motivate yourself out of a weak posture is when you got to rise up to fight for somebody else, when you've got to be an advocate or an ally or assistance to somebody else. God gives you strength and fortitude to fight and to struggle and to be there. I don't know how it is with you, but I do know when I've been called to rally for somebody else, something in me wants to fight differently for another than I do even for myself. And watch what God does. He blesses you to see who you are and what you bring to the table by allowing you to get up and fight for your brother. Fight for your sister. Fight for your family. Fight for your home. Fight for another. And in doing so, you strengthen your own resolve. You will see difficulty differently when you number one. Get stationed. Number two, speak life to yourself. Number three, secure your heart. Number four, strengthen your resolve. But then watch this because what God does is he promises you he's going to give you victory. Look at the text because I need you to see something before we get to this last point. When our enemies, verse 15, heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each one to his own work. From day, from that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped, equipped with spears and shields and bows and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who, who were building the wall. Those who carried the material did the work on one hand and held a weapon in the other. Here's the thing I want you to remember, that in order for us to really see difficulty differently, You've got to do all of those things we just mentioned. You've got to get stationed. You've got to speak life. You've got, you've got to secure your heart. You've got to strengthen your resolve. But you also need to be strategic. See, in between verses 15 and, and uh, uh, 14, 15 and 16, you have a little bit of peace. And that's what happens. You're always going to have a little bit of peace. But don't get complacent with the peace. Don't get comfortable with the peace. What you need to learn is the fifth one. Be use some strategy. Remember that the attacks will keep on coming. The plots will keep on coming. The ridicule will keep on coming. So you and I have to learn how we fight. When we fight, we're not fighting and the war is over. We fight battle after battle after battle after battle. So you've got to learn how to be strategic. Nehemiah set the thing up where he said, we might have gotten victory in this one battle, but we're going to work with one hand and hold a weapon in the other. Did you see this? What's the lesson? Being strategic means that we've got to learn how to work for our God and worship. Work and worship. Do what you are called to do. That's your work. 
But make sure you worship the name of our God. Worship through every storm. Worship through every difficulty. Keep on doing what God has called you to do. Be strategic. Know that the enemy at any point might come back to do what he's going to do. And since he can, since he will, I'm going to be strategic. Watch the point when we learn how to employ these in, uh, uh, principles into our life. We will be like Nehemiah and see the difficulty of our season differently. Why? Because we're stationed. We speak life into ourselves. We secure our hearts. We strengthen our resolve. And we're strategic. We know that the battle is not over. The fight is not done. There will be more to come. And when it comes, I'm going to step into it. Why? Because I'm never going to stop praying. Don't stop praying. Learn the principles that will secure you to, to be victorious no matter what your season. Can we talk to God? Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless and praise your name because you are an awesome God. We give you glory, Father, for allowing us to understand how we can learn to walk in this season and see it differently because of who you are. We thank you, Father, for the difficulty of the task ahead of us. We thank you for the trouble that's all around us. We thank you for all of the things that perplex us and cause us frustration and cause us to be despondent. We thank you for everything you put in our life that drives us to talk to you in prayer. We thank you for every ache, every pain, every issue, every disappointment, every time we've had to mourn, every sickness, every heartache, everything that causes us to call on you. We magnify your name because you're worthy and we ask even right now, Lord God, that you bless us. We pray even right now that you strengthen us. We pray even right now that you help us to hold these truths in our heart that we might bring you glory. We ask, oh God, that you get help us to be stationed in a way where we are set up to do what you would call us to do. That we're aware of our vulnerable Place, vulnerable places. We pray, Lord God, that you help us to speak life into our situation, knowing that you are our God, strengthening our hearts and securing our, our way so that you get glory. Help us to be wise and strategic day by day, to work with all of our might and to worship at the same time. We want your name to be magnified. We want your name to be glorified. We want your name to be, to be seen and heard throughout all this world. Use us up for that good, Lord God. And when you're done, when you are done, bring us home. We ask all of this because of your power. Heal, strengthen, and renew. And help us, Father, to live every day just for you. We ask all of this in the name of your Son and our Savior. In the soon coming King's name, we together say and we together pray. Amen and amen. Listen, don't stop praying. God is more than able to help us to see a difficult situation differently as we get stationed, as we secure our hearts, as we speak life into our world, as we strengthen our resolve, as we strategically face the next moment, working and worshiping all the way through. Listen, I'm gonna pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you.
For your suffering, for your suffering, for the way that you hurt, you bled, for the pain that you endure. If I had one plea, it would be Jesus keeping me near the cross, near the cross. At your cross, there's forgiveness. At your cross, there is mercy. At your cross, there is 